So we have seen, uh, we have seen about parametric petriness and decidability issues in uh, parametric petriness. Now we will focus on extending time petrinets uh, with parameters. So first let us review a bit classical time petrinets. So we have normal petrinet and a transitions are uh, annotated with uh, intervals that specify how long the transition should be enabled um, to be able to fire. So now we can distinguish between enabledness, so we have enough tokens in the input places, and fireability, the transition is enabled, but also it has been enabled for sufficiently long time. Uh, an additional uh, constraint that we have here is that when a transition has been enabled in its interval, it can fire uh, as before, but then uh, uh, it cannot wait longer than uh, the upper uh, and upper bound here in the interval. So this, impo uh, this um, here would mean that we have a sequence which is forced for the first two firings of transition. First, we will have to fire T0 um, at most at date one, at date one, and then we would have to we could fire uh, T1 uh, at the earliest time at date two. So now, how do we put parameters in, in this model? Then we would just have to change the endpoints of the intervals to parameters, and we would get, we would get here uh, parameter A and B. And um, so this is very close to a parametric time automata that uh, we have seen in another sequence. Uh, and we can actually relate to the, the results of, of uh, parametric time automata uh, to get some decidability results of uh, bounded time petriness. So first, we have a, a structural transition, a translation from uh, time the uh, automata to bounded time petrinets. And this uh, translation it preserves languages, time languages, which implies that it preserves state reachability. And uh, we have exactly one gadget for each constraint in guards, and uh, timing constant appear explicitly. So uh, what I mean by this is that uh, in, if in this construction we change the constants by parameters, then nothing changes really. So the, we can, using this construction, uh, um, get all the undecidability results from time to matter um, uh, into a, a bounded parametric time petrinets. In the other direction, we also have structural transitions uh, from uh, time petrinets to time to matter. And in the same way as before, we can use them, but this time we will use them to get decidability results. Uh, because of course we can start from our time petrinets, transform it into a, a time automata, and then uh, verify on the time automata uh, what we wanted to verify on the time petrinet. So we can do that also for parameters, and we get uh, decidability results for uh, parametric time petrinets. Now, uh, we have seen before uh, in another sequence that we had to use an abstraction of the state space of time the parametric time automata or time automata, and we can define exactly the same for uh, uh, parametric time petrinets, but it's not the one that we will uh, uh, see now because um, uh, we have a better, in some sense, that it's a bit coarser and also it's a bit simpler to, to, uh, to use in practice. Uh, we have the state class abstraction from Bertomieu and Menache. And um, we will now see how this uh, abstraction can be extended to parameters too. So now uh, we have a time petrinet here. And um, instead of uh, recording in our symbolic state uh, the time elapsed for each uh, transition here, we could say, for example, uh, we start with zero and then we let time pass and then we get to one and then you know, up to four, uh, maybe up to three here because we have this upper bound. Then we will record the time to fire, like a timer. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, zero, and five. So here initially we have um, uh, that T0 must fire in about, uh, in between uh, one and four time units and uh, T1 should fire between two and three time units. So, when we want to fire T0, uh, how does it work? We will say, so first, T0 should fire before T1, um, because it's the transition that we have uh, chosen to, for firing. So we have this constraint, and then we will, uh, since we want to, to keep this timer behavior, 
we will say that the new origin, the new reference for time for timings, uh, time to fires, would be the firing of transition T0. So we make uh, T0 appear here and new variables here, which are the new times to fire. And then we can just eliminate the variables uh, which correspond to uh, disabled transition or to the fire, fire transition, which is disabled. And then finally, by polyhedral operations, we can get a new uh, symbolic uh, uh, constraint. So now, if we want to do the same thing uh, with um, parameters, then it's just the same, uh, except that we will have parameters. So here, say we have a parameter here and here, then we can just replace all the constants by parameters and everything will work the same except that some constraints on parameters will appear. So here for obviously if, we, if I want to fire uh, this transition then it means that A was less than B and actually um, this comes from uh, these three um, inequations, inequalities. So then everything works as before except that you see that we, we will get uh, a polyhedron which is a bit more complex um, as before with uh, more variables here, variables for transitions but also for parameters. And this um, uh, polyhedra they have uh, a form which is particular which we can call parametric zone but uh, uh, we cannot ensure that there will be a, a finite number of uh, parametric zones in the execution of a particular time petri net. So then we can use uh, the same algorithm more or, le um, more or less than um, with parametric time automata. So for um, uh, existence uh, uh, reachability, for example, of some uh, state, we have this algorithm that we have seen in another sequence for uh, time automata, parametric time automata. But then we can also do uh, inevitability or uh, avoidability, unavoidability. And it works more or less the same. Um, uh, what we want now is that uh, for every path, um, we are sure that we will reach eventually uh, a state a marking here, which is in the set G. So since we want this property for every path, uh, we have here an intersection of the results, but also we have um, an additional, uh, two additional uh, here are um, sets of parameters. So let's start from for this, by this one. So that of S means that it's the set of parameters for which there are no outgoing transitions in, in time petriness. So it means that the parameters are, are such that all uh, intervals from, for outgoing transitions are empty. So these are not uh, good parameters because they create a deadlock. And then we have this part, so if you look uh, at this, you see that this is the reachability condition of the successor, which means the value of the parameter that allow us to um, take the transition, and we take the complement of this. So what does it mean? It means that we have uh, here a way to cut off the successor. So why do we do that? Uh, it's because uh, by doing this, we can sometimes have bigger results than if we just uh, try to, to make every branch uh, go to the, to the goal. If a branch does not reach the, uh, the interesting marking, the goal marking, then we can just cut it off. So for instance here, suppose that we have the property that every path should go either here or, or here. So it seems trivial, but actually to go here we do not have any constraints, but to go here uh, we need that the interval is not empty, so we need that a is greater than one half, um, greater or equal. So if we want to ensure that both paths are possible, then we get the intersection of this and this, and uh, this means that we have a is greater or equal to one half. But we could also say uh, we don't care about this. Let's say that it does not exist in the in the time petri net, so we just cut the transition. So we have a petri net which, is um, uh, which consists only of this part. And then, of course, in this part, we do not have any constraint uh, to reach either P1 or P2, but P2 is not reachable. So uh, how do we cut this? Well, we can uh, just take 
a is less than one half, so this interval is empty, so we cannot take this transition. So for a is less than one half, we, we actually have uh, that uh, we can uh, satisfy the property. So if we do the union of both possibilities, we get a less than one half or greater or equal to one, one half, and we see that actually this property is satisfied for every value of a. So now um, we have algorithms, semi-algorithms, because termination is not guaranteed, but uh, we can uh, also find a way to guarantee termination, but of course by losing uh, some, um, some information in the, in the process. So what we know is that uh, reachability uh, emptiness, so knowing if there is a evaluation such, as, such that some marking is reachable, uh, is undecidable also for integer parameters, if we restrict ourselves not to rational parameters, but to integer parameters. Um, and we know also that it's undecidable for bounded rational parameters. So say, for example, we say that the parameter is between 1 and 2, or 0 and 1, uh, whatever. So what we can do uh, is combine both um, uh, restrictions and say, let's say we have bounded integer parameters. So now everything is trivial because there are only a finite number of bounded, given a bound of integer parameters. And we can actually prove that now the problem becomes uh, p-space complete because we just uh, non-deterministically guess a parameter valuation among a finite number of them. Then we can instantiate um, the PTA or the parame um, parametric time petrinet and solve the problem. We've seen that for petrinets or for time automata uh, reachability problem or even TCTL model checking uh, is p-space complete, so p-space here. And uh, then we, can, we have a non-deterministic uh, machine that uh, solves the problem in p-space and we can use Savage theorem to get that p-space, to get that our problem is actually in p-space and not in p-space, but also in p-space. So what's interesting here that we have um, now a problem which is decidable, of course it's trivially decidable, but then what we will have to do is an efficient way, uh, more efficient than explicitly computing for all the values of the parameters possible uh, what it gives. We will try to do this symbolically and compute uh, all in one step uh, all the values of the parameters that uh, permit to reach some marking. So to do that we will use integer hull. So what is the integer hull of a polyhedron? Uh, that would be the, the red polyhedron inside the, the blue one here. So it's actually defined by taking the convex hull of all the integer points inside my, my, my polyhedron. So if we use now integer hulls and we incorporate, incorporate them into our alg algorithm, then how does it work? Then we just, here, instead of computing the successors of my uh, uh, state class of, or my, uh, my zone, then I will just compute the integer hull of this successor. And then we can prove that uh, if the parameters are bounded, uh, then we have a finite number of such polyhedra, um, and we can prove that the new algorithm is guaranteed to terminate. Uh, it's guaranteed to terminate, and it will give exactly the integer uh, uh, parameter valuations. And then we can do the same for AF. And now we can uh, ask ourselves uh, whether the result that we get, which is actually a union of convex polyhedra, uh, what we know is that the integer points in that, inside those uh, polyhedra, uh, they are the good integer valuations. Uh, what we do not know is whether the other points that we get in these uh, uh, polyhedra are good valuations or not. So basically uh, for the reachability problem, they are uh, good valuations. So every point that uh, we get inside the polyhedra are good. But uh, it's not true in general for AF, and we will see now a small counterexample. So now we have the same example as before, but uh, we want to, um, uh, we have the property AF, uh, so all paths uh, permit to mark this place. So uh, of course for this to be true, we have to cut off this transition. So we have to take A is less than one half. But when I take the integer hull of the uh, symbolic state corresponding to 
the successor by T2, um, I will get uh, uh, something a bit different. So first, the successor itself, it's um, if x uh, here is the, um, the value of, uh, of an implicit clock that counts the time from which this transition was enabled, so x should be greater or equal to 1, and we should have uh, 1 uh, is less or equal to 2a. And when I take the integer all of this, I will get uh, the same thing, but with a is greater or equal to 1. So when I take the complement of this, then of course I will get a is less than 1 and not a is less than 1 half. So all the valuations which are between 1 half and 1 are not good valuations, but they are in the results of our algorithm. So the, the problem here is that we have not cut enough states because we have uh, the integer hull of z uh, is actually included in z. And not, uh, when, we take, when we take the complements, then we do not uh, remove enough um, uh, uh, parametric parameter valuations. So um, to avoid this, what we will do is that uh, we will not use the integer hull for, by applying to each successor, but we will compute successor as usual and only use the integer hull for converge convergence. So what we store in our past list and what we check the past list against is the integer hulls. If we do that for EF or for AF, then we get a new algorithm uh, which actually give a dense under approximation con containing at least all integer valuations. So um, we, get, we get a bigger result, uh, but in practice it's a bit slower uh, than the previous approach because uh, we, do, we have to compute the integer hull from the biggest polyhedron each time instead of starting from already an integer um, a polyhedron with uh, integer vertices. Okay, so if we get back to our example, now uh, we get, of course, uh, in our example that a should be equal uh, less than one half because we have taken the complement of the successor and not of its integer hull, and we can also get a slightly bigger result for EF in this case. So in conclusion, we have time petri nets uh, and we have extended them with timing parameters by uh, replacing the constants in the um, in the intervals by uh, parameters, and then we get, we get the same decidability results for bounded time petri nets with parameters than for parametric time automata. We have seen how to adapt the semi algorithms uh, for the parametric time automata, and we have in particular explored the possibility of computing only uh, integer parameter valuations or something big enough to contain at least all the parametric, uh, all the integer parameter valuations. And we have seen that this, for this uh, algorithm, we can use state classes, which is really the native um, abstraction for time petri nets. And uh, <coughs> now we can have an approximate uh, synthesis algorithm for, um, for uh, time petri nets with parameters. So to do that uh, in practice, there is a tool which is called Romeo. Uh, which works with parametric time petri nets. <laughs>